Hello, here's something I had to learn about for work, which I think is really cool. It's called a TDS barometer. Now, let's start with explaining what a barometer is. The principle is that electrical resistance in a material will vary with temperature. So that's a simple idea. Now, for some materials, this relationship between resistance and temperature is reliable enough to use as a measurement of change in temperature. Think about it like this. A photon of light causes energy to be imparted to a material. The material absorbs it. This causes the material to rise in temperature. On the other end of this, stick a circuit in and you can convert the change in electrical resistance to a measurable change in voltage or current that you can show as your result. So because of that, it's a great way to measure the incident energy of a photon. In astronomy, there's a few examples of bolometers doing this, being used as detectors in the far infrared. So the James Clark Maxwell telescope uses them, and the Herschel Space Telescope has some really pretty ones, very intricate spiderweb pattern bolometers. Now, what's really dead clever, though, is the TES part. You can see from thinking about a barometer as measuring uh, temperature from electrical resistance that what you want is a really small change in temperature to result in a large change in resistance. That makes a lot of sense, right? You have some sensitivity in your measurement of the electrical circuit and the smaller the temperature change for a given change in resistance of that circuit, the better your sensitivity is to those changes. So think about superconductivity. In simple terms, a material has zero electrical resistance below a critical temperature. In practice, what happens is over a very narrow temperature range, resistance drops from one sort of normal level to practically zero. And I'll show a nice graph of this. Imagine putting a material that has this superconducting property right here in the middle of the superconducting transition, and then a photon hits it. It's a tiny change in temperature, but an enormous change in electrical resistance. You'd have a really sensitive detector. That's the superconducting transition, and TES that I've been talking about stands for Transition Edge Sensor. So you're on the edge of that transition, and that's what allows you to sense this. Now, that's interesting enough, but the other thing I want to talk about is there's a really neat little trick called electrothermal feedback, which helps these. You see, there's this thing called joule heating. If you increase the current through a conductor, you cause heat. So if you think of the joule formula for power, power is current squared times resistance, or power is voltage squared over resistance. Apply a bias voltage so that the voltage through your TES is fixed. And look at what happens from the joule formula. Any increases in resistance cause a decrease in joule power. Any decrease in resistance increase in joule power. Now an increase in joule power of course heats the device up and a decrease in joule power cools it down. So if a photon hits the TES an increase in resistance brings this measurement up but it causes a decrease in joule power, and the decrease in joule power is really quick for bringing the temperature back down to that equilibrium far faster than if you just let the device settle, which is an incredibly clever little trick. But anyway, that's the basics for TES barometers and why I think they're interesting. There was a little offshoot of some work I've been looking at, and they're absolutely fascinating. 